Hi everyone, um, Kate rocked up this morning to film and I got sidetracked. I found this old gate out the back and I decided to give it a new coat of paint. And now that it's spring, it's time to get outside and in this old house there's the opportunity to do some really fun stuff with recycling. So it was very, very rusty. I've put two coats of um, rust protector spray on it and now I'm going to cover it with a nice layer of cream paint. And then I've bought, where is it? I've bought a creeper. So I've bought a Pandora that's going to grow really, really fast to go up it. And then when we come back later in the year and do our Christmas special, we're going to make a wreath to go on it with some fairy lights. So I'm just going to put a little bit more on and then I better go and put some shoes on and some lippy on and we can get started for our leftover show. Do you okay. So today's a leftover day. I have my list of what I want to show you, plus I've got some gorgeous shots of things that people have sent in for us to have a look at. But first of all, I wanted to show you what I have got up to in the last week. And it was really rainy on Saturday, so I did manage to get some work done. And then the sun came out on Sunday and I didn't do much. But let's see what I've got done. Oh, and I found a couple of extra things that I wanted to show you. Um, now, first of all, when I was just showing you before the door that I'm painting, which I hope comes up really well for us to use for a Christmas wreath. I also wanted to show you this one. Now I popped this on Facebook a little while ago and a lot of you seem to like the concept so I brought it uh, in to show you today. This is um, an old tatty orange wicker basket that I found in our local op shop and it had a really hideous um, orange lining inside it. So what I've done is I've pulled out, now first of all when we put things on the table, they don't always stand up, particularly when you've got a cat that tries to jump in and out of it. So in here is the citronella candle to weight it down so it would stand up. But I'll show you inside. Now I've actually got it lined um, with one of my cream flowering gums. And I used the same wraparound base technique that we did in show number four to create the base. So if I just... I can't pull it up. I'm just going to give you another look inside and you can see the piecing down the bottom there. I pulled out the old lining, had a look at how it had been made and I could actually use it as a template but I used that assembly technique that we learned in number four. And then just to decorate it on the outside I've used the same fabric and I've made some of my little um, 3D flowers with a Suffolk puff in the middle so they look a little like a, a flannel flower. But, or even that or just nice daisy. So I've popped those on the outside and you can see if I hold it like that for you, there's a couple up the top that I've actually done that they're more like a bud rather than an open flower. Now I've got one left that never got sewn on so I think I'm going to pop him maybe just as a little peeper on the back and I'll get to use this bag this summer now I've shown you. So I'll pop that one aside um, one of the other things that I'm working on at the moment is doing some Dresden plates and this is a really, really traditional technique of course and probably all of us got to do a Dresden plate in our first uh, sampler quilt. So um, what I'm going to do before our next leftover show is make myself for our dining table a Dresden plate but I'm going to fussy cut it from my um, Melbourne fan print and I just wanted to show you this as an idea for you as well. So Kate's done a close up for me here so that you can see that I have laid some template plastic over the actual scallop design on the fabric and then I've used that to cut out my sandpaper template. So if you remember in the, in the pre-shaping show that we did, um, we learned all about how to do that nice little gathering stitch around a sandpaper template to pull the edges in so it's really nice and smooth. So I'm going to get one made up in these fabrics and alternate um, the green and the gold. And if it looks really good, they may be my um, project for my Christmas placemats for this year. So I'll get that done and show you. But when it comes to these sort of shapes that are Dresden's, they don't have to be full circles as we talked about during the last show. They can actually be used to make some really nice fans. Now this is exciting for me. These arrived by FedEx a couple of days ago and these are the new colours in my Melba fan fabric. So this one here is a real deep rust red and this is going to go really well with the Australis colours in Melba. 
um, but I actually love it. It comes down to the really deep, rich red that's in those flowers. So I've got that one. I also did a super bright red. So these will be available early November this year, 2020. So they've been printed, they're being bolted at the moment, and they'll get popped on a boat for me in the next couple of weeks. And I got some little samples sent in to start projects with. That's the bright red. So it's a really bright Chinese kind of dragon red. So that's going to go with a lot of things um, that we've got, including under the Australian sun. And then this one, this is kind of the, this is the really woohoo one. This is the black and gold. And that's come up really well. It is so hard to do a tone on tone black. It's, it's actually not possible. You can't have a tone on tone black. You have to go black gray or black blue. So this is black gray. And this is going to go with a lot of things that I've already got. But the main thing that I'm going to get going while the fabric stock is on the boat is this. Now, this quilt I designed and made with a great mate that I had in patchwork called Jennifer St. Lock. And Jennifer took me outside the boundaries of traditional colours. And um, she made a double wedding ring that was all oriental red and gold fabrics with a mustard centre and plum cross block. So you get, you get the sort of person I'm, I'm talking about. And this was one of my first quilts that I designed and I taught. So this is done with Dresden. So if you have a look here, each of the corners has been made up with Dresden wedges into fans. And I've used my binding uh, on the bias, as we talked about, with the curves like that to edge it. And in the center, I did what is essentially a part of a big Dresden plate for the fan. So I'm actually going to take a lovely visit down memory lane and remake this quilt with this rust red and the black and my cream and some 3D flowers over the top. And that will be a big show and tell when I get it done, but there's a deadline, there's a big deadline to get that done. So have a think about how you can use your Dresden patterns and your templates and things to do some really, really different things. And while you're doing that, I'm going to get this quilt made. I'll pop that to the side. Okay. Now, um, we've been working on bags as well. So if you remember last week, we talked about creating curves for the base of your bags. This one is nearly finished. So you can see I've finally got it made up. Um, that's that base that I cut from my big salad bowl. And I've put the whole bag together. I thought about putting on some quite sturdy, firm, unhinged handles. And I actually uh, showed them in one of our Chandler's Cottage Life feeds and then everyone bought them. So it's not what I'm going to use on my bag now. We're gonna use these lovely new ones that we've got, which have got the hinges on them. So they're going to sit quite nicely either side on my panels of my bag. Uh, when I actually made up these panels, it was too tall or too wide, too tall. So I've got a piece cut off and I'm making that up into a little purse to go in the middle. So that was such an easy bag to make. I hope you've had a go at using that technique. And uh, we'll keep going with that and make some different things for the rest of the year. One of the other techniques that we did in the show with curves was to do this shape base, if you remember. And I used a little chutney pot for the curves on each end. Oh, that looks a bit wonky. Hang on, I haven't ironed that out very well, girls. There we go. Push that out a bit further. So that's got the little curve on each end and then straight in the middle. And then I measured round it to get my panels the right size. Now, while I was making this up, I had a couple of little extra thoughts. This, this curve is tight. And if you, if you haven't done a lot of uh, pacing with your walking foot on, you might find it a bit of a challenge. You can see here that I've pinned mine really heavily as I've gone around the corner to make sure that it sits in nice. But the other thing you can do, of course, is tack it. So if you're really worried about the pins getting in your way, hitting them with your needle, or getting that accurate quarter inch seam, then there is no reason why the night before you're going to sew it, you don't sit down just with a needle and thread and tack those panels together around those curves so it's going to be so much easier to sew. The other little tip that I said I was going to try, and I think you can just see it around the top of that bag, maybe on the inside with the contrast thread. There you go. The other thing I was going to try was to top stitch around the top of the bags if I'm going to set them into these metal frames and it was the best thing to try. So I haven't put this one on yet. You can see it's all ready to go. I've sewn my lavender on now and the bag's all ready and I'm going to use one of these metal frames 
to set into it. So I did it with this one. Looks so cute. I did it with this one. Um, this is another of our beautiful new uh, metal frames that we have available. And I did the same around the top of this one. And I sewed that one in, in half the time because that top had been top stitched. And it was nice and flat to work with and quite sturdy to sew into the frame. This bag here is uh, the one that's being used as the template, if you like, for the free pattern that will come with these metal frames. And what I chose as my technique for assembly is the one, again, that we did in show number four. So it has a really narrow base. It's a finished two by 10 inch. And you can see there, it's quite narrow down the bottom, but it is one of our little wraparound basin signs. So that's what I chose to use for the actual free pattern that you get with the frame. But of course, you girls know how to do that now because you've watched show number four and you know how to design your own. So that's got the little click and the little handle and that is ready for some fun. So just on that bag, if you do work with one of these handles, here's another little thing just to show you that we're working on at the moment. My Summer Palace fabric has uh, dragons in octagonal motifs. Um, in one of the prints and it's quite large it's about I think it's about seven and a half inches across from memory the whole block what we've actually done is Leanne Church and I have worked together and we have created digital machine embroidery patterns of the dragon now that's the motive so I'll, I'll hold that up so you can have a look at one of the boys there they go so this one is slightly smaller when we launch this machine embroidery in the next couple of weeks um, the machine software will come with different sizes so if you do machine embroidery you'll know what I'm talking about. And if you don't, you could easily put anything you like into the centre, of course, of a bag panel. But we've chosen um, to promote the machine embroidery on a design that will fit into this frame. And I just wanted to show you, you can see here that this shape is quite different. So you know how we talked about mixing it up. As long as this width here at the top is the same width as what I've given you in the free pattern, which I think is 12 and a half. Oh, now I'm pushing it. 12, 12 and a half to cut at the top you can change the width anywhere from that down so you can go in or out so this one I've tapered out and it's going to have quite a wide base so it will be again a wrap around base and side so I can't wait to get this one made up this week and then I can bring it back and show you so that's some of the things I've been doing with bags and dressed in plates but I've got a couple more things to show you we're also today going to mix up our um, yummy pumpkin damper that we did last week. I've got it going in the oven now with some roasted potato and rosemary. And also, as promised, we've gone back and done the trifecta and made our lemon almond syrup cake this time with lime and toasted coconut. So I'm going to get those things organized and we'll come back. Well, I hope you're all sitting down because I'm working with spring florals today. Yes, that's right, no metallic, no oriental no Australian, it's spring and I've got these beautiful little florals um, that we've had in our store that I just really really wanted to use to make a shabby chic cushion. So I'll show you what I've done. If you remember we were talking about doing our curves. So I looked at the print and it had a wide section on the border and then a narrow one. So I used a larger plate and a smaller plate to cut large and small scallops or curves if you like. And you can see that is how it's come up. I put a white and a whisper weft on the back to make it nice and firm. And I've bagged it out. I've done four of these. So I'm not quite sure how much I'll need yet for my big cushion. But um, I've got enough to work with out of those. And then for the actual cushion, I've picked up from work a piece of just plain white to use as my foundation. And then with the same size curve as the wide curve, morning Ginny, on the actual um, border, I've gone through and fussy cut out little clamshell shapes. There was uh, six fabrics in this collection that we've got. So you can see some have got little roses and different things. And I've actually used um, some of the other colour border print that's got the stripe in it. So as per what we did with shaping circles, I have cut them out with a generous quarter inch seam and I've done my little running stitch along the top an eighth of an inch in and I'm going to be able to sit that like that and there's my string and pull that up and that's going to pull up the seam allowance right over the edge of my scallop. So I have, I've done all of those and I've pre-shaped some of them. 
but you can see what's going to happen. I'm going to probably start about, about here and then just have a lot of fun adding on my clamshells. I'll probably get four across here. I'm not that really fussed. I'm, I'm probably going to chop off some when I've finished it. But you can see they're going to sit like that. And then the second row, once I've slip stitched those on, the second row will come through like this. Oh, this is going to be so much fun. And when it's all finished, I'll have some little filler pieces that will sit up around the edge. I, I probably don't need to do the shaped curve for those. They'll just slot in. cover up the rest of the foundation. So that's going to be really, really cute. So I'll fill the whole thing. It's probably going to be a really big, at least a 60 centimetre cushion. And uh, I went on Marketplace and bought a shabby chic chair. There's a little old wicker commode one. So it was just begging for a shabby chic cushion. So that's where it's going to sit. So that is pretty much it of what I wanted to show you for this week in terms of projects. Then we can have a look at show and tell. Next week on the show though, we're going to stick with our little circular fan theme as well. And I've got a couple of examples of what we're going to be doing here. So this is our Dresden again, but this time we're doing points. Now a lot of people again have been put off by working with this type of shape because they're not sure how they're going to needle turn or pre-shape their points. It's very easy, we're going to do it on the machine and we're going to do it fast. So that's one example. I've got lots to show you, but also this one, which is sitting under my seedlings I need to plant today. You don't have to just use them in a circle. We can use them dovetailed in this shape, we can use them for fans, and I've got a really nice idea to use semi-circles with to do a curved base bag. So we're going to work with those uh, next week. I think a picket fence is in order as well. But for now, let's get the damper out of the um, oven and uh, we can have something to eat. So here we are, we've got our leftovers, leftovers from some of our previous recipes. So last time we made a really rustic, yummy pumpkin damper and I said we would go back and try it again, perhaps with potato. Now what I wanted to do was see how it would work with roasted potato because I thought it is then the perfect leftover food because you could cook extra potato and pumpkin on a Sunday night with the roast and then you could serve up your damper made with the leftover roast vegetables mashed um, with some leftover roast beef or pork or chicken for Monday night. So I used roast potato this time and we did have a roast last night. A couple of things if you do decide to use the recipe and you switch it over to roast. Just remember that when you roast your vegetables, they do come up drier than if you've steamed them, like we did with the pumpkin damper. So what I did was I added in just about a couple of tablespoons of milk with my potato when I mashed it so that I know that there's enough moisture there, I hope, for it. And I switched over to using fresh rosemary and thyme. And instead of making it um, into a circle, we made it into a big log this time because I thought that'd be nicer to slice with leftover um, meat or some cheese or something. So let's have a look and see how we went. And oh, it looks good. Now I mentioned last time for a bit of color and flavor, you could add in some sauteed chopped red onions. And I didn't have one, but I did use red skinned roast potatoes. So I left the skin on when I roasted them. And when I blended them up, I really did blend, not mash today, girls, I must say, because it was um, roasted veggies and I had the skin in. I left the skins on and therefore I've got a really nice color variation from the red skin on the potatoes. Kate is sitting there off screen because she doesn't want to be seen on the screen, but I get to feed her on the side. <laughs> <laughs> so that she can try it. She doesn't want to be in the shot. Um, now, note the beautiful board I'm using again today. This one is uh, one that Michelle Fisher gave me that her husband made. And lo and behold, she dropped off Chuckney this week. She's going for um, favourite quilter of the month for sure. So I've got Michelle's beautiful Chuckney here and I thought that we would try it. Um, what do you do if you've got a jamper that's full of cheese and butter? You add more butter. <laughs> So I'll pop a little bit of butter on top. Where are the plates? Oh, they're there, okay. 
and then we'll put some of this on top. And then I shall pass it to the taste panel, sitting off screen. Oh, cripes, that smells good. Okay. There you go. You have that one, and I'll try this one um, in a minute. So that's looking really lovely. Can I just lift this over to the camera, boss? So it has that. And it's nice and warm still. Do I get a thumbs up? Get a thumbs up. All right, so I'll have mine in a minute. Um, actually, Phil's home today too, so I'll take some in for him. Now, the other thing, we've gone back and done the trifecta for the lemon almond syrup cake. So we did it with the lemon, and then we did in, in the left, last leftover show, we did orange and cardamom, and that came up really nice. I think marmalade's going to be a go for me as well. But today, I decided to do them with lime, and we're going to pop some toasted coconut on top. Uh, Mum gave me some beautiful limes from her tree and what I didn't think about was the size of the lime. So it's the same as if any of you have ever had uh, chooks, you know that if you use one chicken egg that matches two bantam eggs. If you use one lemon you're going to need two limes if they're small. So I gave a couple of limes to Leanne and then I didn't have enough. So I've used one of my kefir limes and I think it's given it a really aromatic um, flavour and, and taste to it because that's the kefir lime tree that you use the kefir lime leaves for your curries and things. So I've used that and I've chopped some up and put it in the syrup and I didn't make it in a loaf tin, I didn't make it in the long skinny one, I made it in my muffin tin and they worked really well so, but, so I sound surprised and look I am because it was a bit of a trial and error but they worked really well so they're going to need less time, they only need about 25 minutes some of you have asked me for the recipes that we do in the shows. In each show, if you don't really want to write down the recipe as we go, Kate puts up a little hand-drawn picture of the recipe for me each time. You just need to pause on that when you're watching it and you'll be able to screenshot it. But if you don't want to do that, yes, I promise, we've just kind of decided today we will do a, um, what would you call it, a season one of the Craft and Cook show in a recipe book with projects before Christmas 2020. So we're just starting to think about styling that and putting it together at the moment and we promise we'll have that ready for you early December this year. So back to these, I've got these done here and I've made up my syrup this time. You can see it, I'll hold it up there. You can see it's got little bits of lime in it and it's going to be really nice and wee, tangy. So we'll pour that over. There's nothing tidy about this recipe, is there? <laughs> it's messy and sticky. So it's always good to use a rimmed plate. And anyone that doesn't have perfect table manners will go back and lick the rest of the syrup off the plate later. That's just part of the territory with this recipe. So I've popped that on and then I toasted some um, shredded coconut. So we'll pop that on top. Is that arty enough for you, Kate? Oh, yeah. <laughs> um, you have a go at adding some coconut into the recipe as well, but I do like to add my coconut on the end, particularly at these big shredded pieces. Um, not everyone likes coconut in their recipe, so at least you've got the option then of uh, saying with or without coconut on top, which is my dad. This one on top, so if I hold those up and show you. All right, but the proof is in the eating, correct? So let's um, let's see what they look like inside. All right, I'll hold, I'll hold those up for you so you can have a look. Yum yum. Um, I'll pass one over to Kate now. While we're being as ladylike as possible eating these. Let, let's have a talk about some of the photos, gorgeous photos that I got sent in this week by some of you to have a look at and they were so worthy of sharing. So let's have a look. Um, the first one is, oh, Josie Turner sent me this amazing quilt. Have a look at this. This is what I would call a one fabric quilt and I think I'm right Josie, please correct me if I'm wrong. But this amazing quilt's just been made with my Australian themed Melba border stripe in the in the black Australis as you can see. How incredible is that? I'm still trying to work out how she did it. 
It, it's very, very clever. I'm loving the room that it's sitting in as well, may I add. And Josie, thank you so much for sending that in. You've made me think about going back and working with my border stripes again. And I'm inspired even more to do that at the moment um, because uh, the new Australian sewing community on Facebook, if you haven't seen it, uh, which is me and uh, 10 other colleagues that have beautiful Australian businesses, um, includes Michelle Marvick, who has her amazing template collection. And she's working with Melbourne at the moment as well. So between the two of you, you've inspired me to go back and have a look at some of the things that we can do. Perhaps some of our Dresdens and things we can have a play with, with Melba. Carol Hill also sent in this gorgeous corded basket. Now, I've had a go at this and I had an epic fail. So have a look at this amazing one that Carol's done. This is done with just using strips of fabric. So it's a great one where you want to use up some of your scraps and things that you have. Um, and she's made some of our ruched flowers that we did in show number three with some of the fabrics to put on the front. That is beautiful, Carol. I'm envious. It's just gorgeous. So love that. And Julie Lucky also sent in some gorgeous little basket and purses and a bamboo bag that she's been making um, from her stash when she's been inspired with some of the things on the show. Looking very, very productive with what she's doing. So Julie, thank you so much for sending those in. Then I got this amazing um, email from Shirley Chambers and she has been so, so busy. So if you have a look at the flowers, the applique flowers that are on the quilt here, these come from a block of the month that we have recently run called Maywood Meadow and it's now available um, as a pattern. And the second one, which has got the next 12 months, is still sitting on the ladder in my um, studio waiting to be quilted. But Shirley has done an amazing job incorporating them into this quilt. And then there's another one here that she's actually used, which I believe she said was an oriental um, fabric designed quilt. And she's popped all of my gum flower prints in there with some other under the Australian sun. And this, this is great, Cheryl, because what you've done is you've also told me to get off my butt because we need to reprint the um, eucalypt flowering gum at the moment and I have been debating which colours we need to add to the collection because every time I go back and print we can add another one. So if you know which ones you want and you're watching this show close to when it went live feel free to email me at lisa at lisachandler.com.au and let me know what you think because it may very well influence me on what new colours we add into the collection. Then the coolest girl on the block Terry Pettigan. Did you know she is Terry Pettison? She is a tram driver. So she's Terry the tram driver. I think that is the coolest thing on the planet. And she drives trams all around Melbourne, Australia. So in between doing that, she is a prolific quilt maker. And Terry just sent me this little photo uh, that I wanted to show you. She's taking a lot of her remnants bags and pieces she's got left over in her studio and making this gorgeous strippy quilt. This is very, very, very um, important that I want you to have a look at this because we're going to take that technique, if you're watching this live, we're going to pop it into our live feed on Chandler's Cottage this week and show you some other ideas on what to do with your leftover strips. So that's absolutely awesome, Terry. Keep, up, keep it up, please, and I want to see that quilt when it's finished. Deb Cooper, Deb Cooper, has been so busy again this week. Now have a look at these. These are a heap of bags that Deb's making up um, using my fabrics and the techniques that we've done in the show. Deb had a great question this week about what batting to use. So we've set her up with some soft and stable or some uh, adhesive rubber foam batting. If you do want any hints on what batting to use um, with your bags, if you don't want to just use scraps, again, just get in contact with me and we can give you some advice depending on what you're making. And uh, here's another corded one here, and I do love this. Deb Burt sent this one to me, and I'm, I'm only laughing. I'm not laughing at Deb's work, but I'm laughing at her honesty that she had intended to make a placemat, and somewhere along the line, it turned into this gorgeous long oval basket. And all I can say is, Deb, don't scrap the placemats, mate. Just keep making the baskets, because that looks absolutely beautiful. Uh, I can imagine that sitting in any home anywhere with anything from fruit or flowers or trinkets or anything sitting in it. So it's very, very nice and I'm glad you shared it all with us. And, and last but not least, uh, Josie sent in this picture, never in my lifetime did I think scrunchy, scrunchies would come back into fashion. I know my hair is getting long at the moment while I can't get a haircut, but scrunchies are back and Josie has made these gorgeous little cute ones um, for her girls. See the little like bunny ear petals on them? Aren't they cute? 
So thank you very much as well. And please remember, if you do have any photos of what you're making, it doesn't necessarily have to be from the show. Uh, a little bit of inspiration is great, but it doesn't matter. It doesn't have to be with my fabrics or anything. We'd just love to see what you're working on this spring. And I would be delighted to share it with everyone in our next leftover show. Now, what are we going to do next week? Well, we've got a few things. Um, as I mentioned before, we're going to do the pointed Dresden cushions and also the table mat that I've got here. And we've also got a fan quilt that I'm working on and a handbag. We'll also have a look at how to use appreciate points that you sew on your sewing machine to do everything from doing picket fences. I want to look at making a little pencil case as well with the shapes. So there's lots of things we want to do. And then if you want to think a long way out, well, after our next leftover show, we are finally going to attack English paper piecing. But we're not going to do it in the way that everyone else does it. We're going to change it up a little bit. So if you do need to get in some fabrics or anything that you use for English paper piecing, besides the shapes, leave that bit to me. I want to show you what shapes we're going to use. Then please think about getting those into the mail to you. And um, we'll get on to that as soon as we can. So thank you very much for joining me today. I hope you've enjoyed our little leftover show. And I look forward to seeing you next week. Spring is in the air and it won't be long now before we'll take the show on the road. Thanks, folks. Bye.